I'm Amina robinson Fayek, Vice President of Research and Innovation at the University of Alberta. I'm so pleased to welcome all of you here today. As we begin today's announcement, I'd like to recognize the land on which we gather. The University of Alberta acknowledges that we are located on Treaty 6 territory and respects the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nation, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. On behalf of all of us here at the University of Alberta, I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to the Honourable Nate Glubish, Minister of Technology and Innovation, the Honourable Rebecca Schultz, Minister of Environment and Protected Areas, and Mark Summers, Associate Vice President, Agriculture and Environment with Alberta Innovates. Thank you for your ongoing support. At the University of Alberta, we are committed to bringing our expertise to bear on the grand challenges of our time, including here at home on the issues that are impacting Albertans. This idea is central in Forward with Purpose, our first pan-institutional strategic plan for research and innovation. Also central to that plan is the understanding that collaboration can drive transformational change here in Alberta and worldwide. Indeed, collaboration has long been at the heart of our collective successes here in the province. We're pleased to be working once again with Alberta Innovates and the Government of Alberta, as well as other collaborators to accelerate the development of key technologies that will ensure Albertans can rely on a clean water supply today and for generations to come. To tell us more about the Alberta government's investments in innovative water solutions, I'd now like to welcome to the podium the Honourable Nate Glubish to deliver remarks. Well, thank you, Amina. Always a pleasure to be at the University of Alberta uh, to talk about some really exciting new technologies and new innovations that are going to change the world. And if you've heard me talk before, you've heard me say this, but it bears repeating. Technology is not just an industry. It is the future of every industry. Last week, you probably saw me talking about military applications of technology when we had the really exciting announcement of NATO Diana choosing the University of Alberta as one of their new test centers. Well, today we're here to talk about a different topic. We're here to talk about water. And there has never been a more important time for us to turn our attention to the topic of water. Th this upcoming year, we all know it is going to be a dry year. We all know that we are facing risks of drought across the province. And so it is so important for us to be making investments into new technologies and into research that will help us to do even more when it comes to conservation of our water, when it comes to the protection of our water, when it comes to the cl cleaning and remediation of wastewater. Alberta has a great reputation around the world as being some of the most responsible developers of our natural resources, and it is absolutely possible for us to build such a reputation as some of the most responsible stewards of our water. That is why the Alberta government is so proud to be financial partners with the University of Alberta through Alberta Innovates, to be investing in numerous exciting research projects. In fact, over the last nine years, we've invested $75 million into over 150 different projects focused on water. This is so important for Alberta's future. And today, I'd like to highlight uh, a recent project that is gaining a lot of traction. Uh, one of those technologies that is being piloted right here with expert researchers from the University of Alberta and they're partnering with the city of Calgary. This technology uses a granular sludge reactor to increase the amount of processed water that can be reused and recycled. And it will also increase the performance and the capacity of municipal water treatment facilities. This project has the potential to change the world. And it most certainly will help to make all Alberta municipalities more efficient in how they deal with wastewater and it will help our province to conserve more water. At a time like the one we are facing now, 
with the upcoming drought conditions, this could never be more important. So I offer this as just a recent example of the really compelling and exciting technologies that are being developed at our world-class post-secondary institutions across the province, like the University of Alberta, every single day. We need to celebrate these successes. We need to share these stories to Albertans so that Albertans can take heart and be proud of the innovative and entrepreneurial spirit that we have in this province. It's part of who we are, it's part of our DNA, and there is no problem too big for us to tackle with technology. And make no mistake, Alberta's government is doubling down on technology. We are here to stay, we are here to show the world that we will be one of the most innovative jurisdictions in Canada, and we will help solve problems around the world with our technology. With that, I'd like to pass the podium to my friend and colleague, Minister Rebecca Schultz to share a few words. I have to say, Minister Glubish, I so appreciate your passion for technology and innovation, and it is so great to be here with you today. And thank you so much to the U of A for hosting us here. Water is absolutely one of our most pre precious resources, and I can tell you it's, it's something that I talk about every single day because now, more than ever, we have to find new and better ways to make every drop count as our province, and in fact, most of the entire country, faces drought conditions this year. Our province is growing. Communities are growing. All of our major industries are growing. More and more Canadians and people from around the world are choosing to come here to live, to work, and to raise their families. That is a wonderful thing. And as a province, we have to adapt to meet those demands. We need to use water more efficiently so that communities and businesses alike can grow and thrive. We're doing more than any government in Alberta's history to maximize our province's water supply in the months and years to come. The largest water sharing agreements in Alberta's 118 year history are right now underway. Conservation plans are being put in place for the spring, summer and fall and beyond and millions are being invested on restoring watersheds and creating new wetlands in southern Alberta and of course across the province. We've also announced well over $100 million for a new drought and flood protection program and tens of millions more to improve water management and storage. All of this helps. Better water storage and conservation, new infrastructure, increased water sharing, and natural thriving wetlands will protect communities and make more water available for families and businesses. But we also need to do what Alberta does best, and that is to innovate. Our province is the home of innovators and big thinkers, the researchers and the entrepreneurs who have shown time and time again that they don't back down from a challenge. And that is why we are funding water innovation and technology in a big way. This $75 million in counting is helping develop new technologies to use and conserve water more effectively and more efficiently. It's also providing important funding to better protect water quality and maintain healthy aquatic ecosystems for generations to come. A great example is looking at innovative ways to recycle more water while treating our existing supply responsibly. For instance, the water treatment technologies being created right here uh, at this university, in this lab that I hope we're going to have time to see today before we run off to question period, will help industries recycle wastewater while reducing emissions and keeping more fresh water available for communities downstream. Granular sludge reactors are about 10 times more efficient than any other wastewater treatment technology on the market today, and it can also reduce emissions by up to 15% reduction in some applications. This funding has also mapped groundwater for the Milk River Aquifer in southern Alberta, helping provide more safe and secure water supply for an increasingly dry part of our province. It has also helped researchers at the University of Lethbridge implement more functional flows to restore riparian wood wetlands along the Old Man and Waterton Rivers. It's helping develop new technologies to reduce water in use in the oil sands and creating new potable water testing labs for rural communities. And that is just the start. With 65 projects ongoing, we'll be seeing more of this in the months and years ahead. Innovation in Alberta is everywhere. We know that companies, municipalities, academia, industries, and communities are all innovating too. Together, we can absolutely reduce the impacts of drought, improve water quality, and use water more efficiently and effectively to ensure we help growing communities enjoy water for life. 
Thank you so much, and I'd now like to invite Mark Summers from Alberta Innovates. Thank you very much, Minister Schultz and Minister Glubish, and to the wonderful team here at the University of Alberta, where I'm proud to have completed both my undergrad and my graduate studies right here in the Faculty of Engineering. Water, as we all know, is one of those things that often gets taken for granted until it's not available or until supplies are short. The Water Innovation, the water innovation Program that here, we're here talking about today advances the technologies, tools, and knowledge to ensure Alberta has a safe, secure, and reliable water supply so our communities, businesses, farms, and ecosystems have the water they need now and into the future. As the province's innovation engine, Alberta Innovates plays a role in delivering the most powerful innovation and resources to manage water efficiently and effectively. We will continue to work with the great innovators and entrepreneurs in the province of Alberta to advance their ideas and their ingenuity so we can all enhance the resilience of our province in the face of climate pressures and water supply challenges. It is exactly this type of innovation and knowledge supported by the Water Innovation Program, like the granular sludge reactor, say that five times fast, we're highlighting today that can prepare us to respond to the drought we're in the midst of now and for the next water crisis whenever and whatever that may be. So it is my great honor to invite Dr. Simon Aburisk, University of Alberta's Dean of Engineering, to come forward and offer some thoughts. Dr. Aburisk. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Glubish, Minister Schulz, and Dr. Summers. My name is Simon Abrusk. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering here at the University of Alberta. The University of Alberta's Faculty of Engineering is at the forefront of developing groundbreaking engineering solutions to address critical water quality, sustainability, and management challenges. We've been at this for almost 100 years. It's not new, but we're picking up quite a bit of steam. Our researchers are spearheading innovative initiatives to ensure the responsible and efficient utilization of water resources, benefiting current and future generations in Alberta and globally. In 2023, academic rankings of world universities, our environmental engineering program, which houses the water research that we do, ranked second in Canada and top 20 worldwide. Something to be very proud of. Well, we're gonna get it to be number one in Canada and top 10 worldwide fairly soon. The faculty is home to six Canada research chairs engaging in water-related research across a broad range of specialties, from sustainable and resilient wastewater treatment to advanced polymer reactions intermolecular forces and interfacial sciences. Within the Faculty of Engineering, there's upwards of 28 principal investigators who are currently engaged in water research. And they basically go into three different themes. Water and wastewater treatment technologies like the lab that we're gonna to see today, which studies the safe reuse of treated wastewater in sectors including municipal and rural, indigenous, as well as a lot of industrial uh, works and remote communities. Water quality monitoring and management work that improves the sustainability and safety of water resources for human use, aquatic ecosystems and recreational and industrial purposes. We've got a lot of robotics and automation and mechatronics work going on to support that work. And third, was the water resource management, which includes understanding and modeling water systems and developing solutions for various challenges, including flood and drought control. Our faculty is also home to the newly minted Water Research Center. It um, got set up and approved in collaboration with industry, um, current sponsored by EPCOR, 
as a center devoted to tackling a range of global challenges related to water through collaborations between industry, university, and government. I believe that through our collaborative efforts and the support of the Alberta government and partners such as Alberta Innovates, we will generate far-reaching outcomes that will continue to benefit our province and the country as a whole. Thank you for your continued support and thank you for the work that Alberta Innovates continues to do in helping us push the envelope further. With that, thank you and I ask Dr. Robinson Fake to come back for closing remarks. Thank you, Dr. Eberiz, for all those remarks. I'm always so inspired to hear about the work of our researchers and innovators, and also the spirit of collaboration that helps us advance real-world solutions to pressing challenges of our time. I look forward to seeing more from the teams highlighted in today's announcement, and continuing our work with the Government of Alberta and with Alberta Innovates. That concludes today's formal announcement. We will now set up for questions. Thank you, Doctor. For media in the room, we have a media mic right here. If you have any questions, we'll start in the room and then uh, we'll go to the phones. Please identify your name, your outlet, and we will go with one question, one follow-up. Go ahead. Laura Crowe, City News. Um, I'm not sure who this question could be directed to, maybe one of the researchers. Um, I guess this water, this new technology can increase the amount of water that can be reused and recycled. Um, do you have numbers and can you explain the impact that this new technology will have when conserving water? Can I ask for help or one of my researchers? <laughs> <Yeah>, absolutely. <laughs> Our principal investigator at the work is spending a sabbatical in Australia, so I'm trying to fill in. I'm a construction engineer, so I know very little about the subject. But I'll ask if Dr. Gamal Eddin, can you come and answer that question for us? Dr. Gamal Eddin is director of the Water Research Center and uh, a lead researcher in water. Thank you. Can you repeat that question again, please? With this new technology, um, it can reuse and recycle water. So I guess I'm wanting to know, are there numbers? How, how much of an impact is this going to have when conserving water? So with this uh, technology, we can actually perhaps treat more volume of the municipal wastewater, so in biological treatment systems. So you can actually process more water within a certain time frame. So this means uh, you can actually supply more demand for the reuse of the water, hopefully with this treatment followed by some other advanced tertiary treatment, then the water could be safely used for reuse, agricultural reuse or other applications. Do you have a follow-up? Yeah. And I might just um, explain why that's so important. So have we've been, as we've been working with industries and municipalities over the, and all major water users over the last number of months, uh, one of the suggestions has, that has come up is, is looking at our wastewater reuse regulations. If we can uh, essentially uh, make sure that larger quantities of wa water are cleaned through this type of technology uh, and essentially cleaned to higher levels, that will enable us to release more of that water. Because one of the concerns is that as we're looking to uh, release that water, especially in a time of drought where there's less other water uh, in the system to dilute that, there are very real health and safety concerns uh, with that. So this type of innovation uh, helps us look at wastewater reuse a lot differently and certainly more effectively. Do you have a follow-up? Yes, coming out of a very dry winter or a dry year in general, I guess how dire of a state are we in right now in Alberta <laughs> when it comes to drought conditions and why are these technologies important at this time? Yeah, so right now uh, we are in probably the most significant drought situation that we've seen since 2001. It's not just in Alberta, of course, I believe over 70% of Canada is experiencing these types of drought conditions with El Nino this spring. That's why we've entered these water sharing agreements with all of our major water users, especially in southern Alberta, uh, where the situation uh, is, is a little bit more intense, I would say. Uh, in the past, we haven't had to declare an emergency. We've had all those major water users 
come together to say, look, how can we conserve water? How can we use less? What might we have in our water allocation to share with other users so that everybody has access to some water? But as we look at this type of research, um, what this does is allow us to use water more eff efficiently, more effectively, to reuse water more efficiently and effectively, and doing that in a way that helps maintain uh, our high environmental standards, but also protects human health and safety as well as uh, aquatic and animal health and safety as well. Uh, just to add to that, you know, one of the things that Minister Schultz mentioned that is so important is this is the worst drought conditions we've seen since 2001. It's not the first time we're seeing it, but it's the first time in a long time. And that is why, you know, if we were waiting until this happened to be investing in new innovation, we'd be making a mistake. And that's why it was so important for us to highlight today that we've been investing in this for the last nine years, $75 million, over 150 different research projects, all of which are focused on cleaning our water, conserving our water, helping to return, uh, to, to return wastewater into a form that could actually be reused in a safe way. We are becoming world leaders and experts in this space. We are investing heavily in this space, and we've been doing it thinking ahead, knowing that someday this day would come. This is how we are preparing for days such as this, and we're not going to stop here. We're going to keep on investing heavily in this kind of research because we know that we need to lead the way and show the rest of the world the best way to go. And that's why I'm so proud of the great work that's happening at the University of Alberta and the, the work that we're doing through Alberta Innovates to ensure that the funding is there for this important research. Any other questions from the floor? Thank you. Operator, can you please put through our first caller? Thank you. Jordan Canigan, CTV. Hi there. Thanks for taking my question. I uh, assume this is for the researchers, but just looking for more information on that uh, pilot project or test project that's happening here in Calgary when it comes to the water treatment facilities. When did that trial started, uh, start? How is it going? And when could we see that technology operational in municipalities all over the province? I think the project started a few years back, and it's making um, excellent progress. We're towards the uh, uh, delivery point. Um, now, uh, scaling up is, is a different, uh, you know, uh, ball game than actually completing the research and demonstrating uh, that it actually works. It's, it's how you take it and, and scale it up from uh, a lab into a uh, actual uh, project where you're treating uh, quite significantly more amounts of water. So um, the answer is the, the work will be complete fairly soon. The answers will be there. The models and the approaches will be there. Everything looks pretty good so far, and, and we will deliver on, on the uh, deliverables for the project. Um, how long it will take to upscale it and turn it into an actual product is to be determined, but I, I would think within a few years that should be feasible. Great, thank you. Jordan, do you have a follow-up? I guess just a follow-up is what would the province be willing to do to support that scaling up of that to make sure that that technology, if it is so successful, makes its way into more treatment facilities uh, across the province? Uh, thanks for the question. So for, for now, what we're focused on through Tech and Innovation and through Alberta Innovates is ensuring the research funding is there and to ensure that there's a coordinated effort between the government of Alberta and municipalities and our research institutions to tackle this problem. As we get uh, farther along with all of this work, then the next stage will be looking for the best way to scale. It's a great question. Uh, this will likely be uh, an initiative that is cr across ministry and across different levels of government. Um, and so, you know, I think that's something that remains to be seen exactly how we're going to do that. But for now, we're focused on making sure we've got the research resources and that we're leading the, the country in being the most innovative in how we're going to attack uh, drought-like conditions and to support our municipalities with new technologies that will help them to become even better at what they do. Okay. And we have someone else who can add to that. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, Brett Purdy, Alberta Innovates. 
So I just wanted to say a few things on behalf of the research team um, that couldn't be here today. And so to identify first uh, the particular technology uh, activated granular sludge is being tested in the province uh, today in three different areas, looking at high strength, high organic wastewater streams in municipal settings at the University of Calgary, in, um, in the craft beer and distillery settings with another uh, company in the province and then also looking at testing it at, um, uh, to, to address issues about landfill leachate. Um, material, the water that leaches off of landfills in the province which is a portion of landfills with our groundwater and our aquatic systems. Uh, but specifically in terms of the work that's being done with the City of Calgary, uh, the current project is basically commercializing that, commercializing that technology up to a commercial scale. So the work plan in front of the City of Calgary, in front of the research team right now, is putting in place sort of a full-size reactor uh, that's being tested at the facility, um, which will effectively be the demonstration of the technology so that it's available for commercial rollout after this. So it's really the first commercial demonstration of the technology in a municipal setting. So I think that answers the question in terms of timelines. Um, it'll be when this project is finished. Thank you for that. And operator, can you please put through our next caller? Terry Fikowski, CTV. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, this is for Minister Schultz. I am an off topic, but um, you know, as a representative for Calgary Shaw MLA, I'm wondering if I can get your reaction to Calgary singer songwriters Tegan and Sarah using their excessive speech at last night's Juno Awards to condemn the government's proposed policy that once passed will affect transgender youth, and if you think it is time for your government to revisit those policies. Sure, I would just say that uh, I wasn't aware uh, of that speech and I'm not sure the comments that you're talking about, uh, but I am sure that Minister Furr uh, would be able to answer your questions if you reach out to her office. Do you have a follow-up, Terry? Um, yes, I was just wondering if the Minister might be able to just, you know, as a representative of Calgary Shaw MLA and these are two high-profile celebrities from Calgary, just comment on that reaction, the pushback from, there's been a variety of advocacy groups, health groups, and now on a national and international stage, if you will, from these two. Uh, as I've said, because I haven't seen what, what they said or the speech that was made, I, I really can't comment on that right now. But again, I would encourage you to reach out uh, to Minister Fur, and uh, if I've had time to uh, view that, I could probably comment at a later time or date. Thank you. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Thank you. There are no additional questions in the queue at this time. Thank you, Operator. That concludes our Q&A.